You're watching LMCC, your community TV. We all know Lake Minnetonka has a thriving art community and in the very center of all of that is the Minnetonka Center for the Arts and I'm sure many of you have been there to take a class or to look at the exhibits or to enjoy the beautiful building. They have a cafe where you can have a light meal and they have a gift center where you can get one-of-a-kind gifts. But something you may not be aware of out there is the fact that they have a very large and actually very important in the state outreach community. And today we're going to have the executive director for the program for the whole uh, center to talk to us about that program. And I know she's a very busy person, so we really, really appreciate her coming tonight. Please welcome Roxanne Heaton. Thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity to come and speak about this program because it is true that it's, it, I think it happens off the radar for uh, a lot of folks and it's really, it is really important work that we, we, want, we want to tell people about. So thank you for having me. Well, talk to us about some of the, um, well, of course, some of the administrative things about making such a program work, but also about the lives that you touch. And then the third thing we want to talk about here is how can our viewers connect with this program and help you out? So I'll just let you talk about those things. Well, it's a program actually that has been in existence for a couple of decades now, starting on a much lower level some 20 years ago when we partnered with an organization that's familiar to a lot of your viewers, um, Interfaith Outreach and Community Partners. That was really the when the program started to get some legs. And, in, and initially we focused on uh, providing programs to a relatively small group of, um, of their clients uh, who were part of a summer program that they had created to offer a whole wide variety of uh, experiences to kids in the summertime, including arts and, um, and some other sports activities and things. So just, to, just for kids at that so time? Just for kids. And okay. So that, that's how it, it started and then over the years it's, um, it's grown and it's grown more and more as funding for uh, arts programming has been uh, cut and as uh, research and, um, and literature has made it so uh, obvious to more and more people how important these experiences are, there's, there's more of an emphasis and, then there's, um, and there's been more funding available. Uh, a game changer in the whole realm of outreach programming for the Minnetonka Center for the Arts was the legacy amendment mm -hmm. and the dollars that have been set aside in the, in, in the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund um, that has been earmarked for programs like this. A number of those dollars have been made available to us the last few years and that's enabled us to really ramp up our efforts and engage all kinds of, of new audiences. So. Um, so it's a program that's evolved over time. Initially, it was largely focused on children. As I said, we did a lot of work um, and still are doing work with uh, school districts um, and a lot of teen groups. But a few years ago, we expanded it into the um, adult population. And we work with um, developmentally challenged adults through, again, some agencies in our community, um, Hammer Residents, for example. Um, as one, and there's a couple of other organizations that serve um, folks with some of, of those adults with those kinds of challenges. Um, so that's been a huge new emphasis. And then we've also expanded into the realm of um, seniors. And we do a lot of programming with uh, seniors with memory issues. And, um, you know, there's great science um, that proves that uh, the the creative experience, the creative expression, and the kinds of things we do in these programs um, can actually reverse some of the effects of aging. So they're particularly valuable for folks that have um, that have issues associated with memory. Mm -hmm. And these experiences can be empowering and life-changing and transformative for a, a lot of the folks that are able to take advantage of them. So we think that it's, 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 you know, it's really important work. It's very mission consistent for us. It's 
um, our, our job as we view it in the world is to make high quality arts experiences available to the widest possible audience, uh, regardless of their, uh, their uh, ability or their um, financial wherewithal. Um, that, that is the work that we do. So this, this program is a really um, tangible representation of our mission and it's, and it's very important to us. That's very exciting. Um, so I want you to talk a little bit about some of the kinds of different people that you reach out to and the partnerships that help you do that. Um, but also, if I were taking such a class in your outreach program, is there any possibility that my work would ever be seen anywhere? Do you ever display any of that work? We do. We've done exhibits of, um, of some of our client group's work at the Arts Center. We've also done exhibits of the work at their facilities. Um, we also, um, as, as you're aware, we had a program um, at the Ridgedale Center where we partnered with a number of organizations creating murals. We had artists in residence at, that worked with, again, Interfaith Outreach and, um, and St. David's and a, a couple of schools, after school programs that um, uh, participated in, in our program and we created these murals and we hung them in the center court at Ridgedale and they were on display for oh, it was a couple months in total before they went off to their respective homes at the partner client sites. So there, as many ways as we can we try to, um, we try to display the work. Um, but it also seems like, and, and our, our teachers would be better equipped to speak to this than I, but it seems like so much of the richness in these programs is in the experience of creating the work. Um, not even so, so much the product, although the product is important. Mm -hmm. I, I think the real, um, the, the real richness is what happens in the classroom when the, um, when the clients are working with our teachers and, and doing this, these very special projects. That's exciting. Um, I uh, wonder, uh, Roxanne, there's so many things going on at the Minnetonka Center for the Arts. How do you juggle all those parts and pieces? Um, well, I don't sleep a lot. <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's it's a demanding job, but it's one that um, uh, th that I love. And so, you know, I think anytime you 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 have work that um, that you love, there's a um, kind of a natural flow to it that just makes it work with the rest of your life. I have an incredibly capable staff, and I have two really extraordinarily talented program directors, and they get all the credit for um, managing these outreach programs. And as you can imagine, taking art making off the property comes with it um, a, a whole different set of things than, um, than delivering classes in the building. So it's been a learning process for us as well, trying to figure out how to create an infrastructure that would support delivering programs at client sites, which is what most of these programs don't happen at the, at the Art Center. So the program directors, um, and as I said, there are two. Um, Holly Nelson is responsible for adults, and Nicole Buckholz is responsible for the children and youth program. Mm -hmm. And they make sure that all those pieces work together. They, they find the right teacher for the specific um, job that we have. They, they coordinate the schedule with the teacher, with the client sites. They work with the, the client sites to identify the uh, program participants, if appropriate. Um, and with the grants that we've had that have funded a number of these programs, we have all a whole set of requirements relative to evaluation. So there's, um, there's data at the end of a program that speaks to directly to what impact the program has made. In, um, in, the, in the individual's world, and that's based on primarily the teacher, our teacher's observations and the um, uh, participating organization staff observations, but there's an accountability factor that's really important too. So there's lots and lots of moving parts and lots of people involved in, in making it all work. That's great. Well, Roxanne, how can our viewers get involved in this program? Because that's so exciting. Well, first of all, to spread the word about, about the work is extremely important, and, um, and particularly the fact that a lot of this work is supported by um, uh, dollars from Minnesota citizens having um, 
having passed the legacy amendment. That's, um, that's a really valuable message to deliver as many ways and as many times as possible that these, mm -hmm. these are living, breathing examples of those dollars at work and that funding um, needs to continue. That being said, the grants that we get and the, and the funding that we receive from the clients don't cover the cost of delivering these programs. So um, we're, we always need more financial support and there's certainly many different ways um, to do that. We have uh, oper volunteer opportunities oh, great. if anyone's interested in, um, in helping out. Um, and there's many different forms that could take from helping teachers prep materials to delivering materials to, you know, uh, uh, assisting actually in a hands-on way with the actual delivery of the program. There's, there's opportunities for that as well. So many different opportunities to participate. That's just great. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Roxanne. And we're going to um, visit with one of our artist one of your artist instructors in a second. Here, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with Genevieve Chamberlain. Television is a powerful and influential medium that allows different groups the opportunity to produce programming that directly affects their own communities. Public, educational, and government access channels ensure that all people, regardless of race, age, gender, disability, religion, or economic status, have access to local government information and the use of a public communication forum. Make sure everyone has a voice. Support your local PEG channel. Welcome back. Our next guest found her way here from Quebec, Canada. She has a BFA in Ceramic Arts from the University of Minnesota, and it looks like she just stayed here. She's an artist instructor in the outreach program for the Minnetonka Center for the Arts, and we're excited to have her here tonight. Please welcome Genevieve Chamberlain. So Genevieve, um, I know you have a rich experience with the um, people that you work with, so tell us about some of your experiences with your classes. Well, um, my background is in ceramics, so I get to play with clay a lot. And uh, I love to bring clay with me uh, to outreach programs, such as uh, the ones at the Minnetonka Center for the Arts. Um, uh, I feel like ceramic is a very, um, very uh, exciting way to connect with children. Uh, it's, it's a primal material, a very basic uh, material related to dirt, basically. And I feel like um, uh, we, can, we can get uh, to places where we wouldn't normally uh, with other mediums. So I work basically uh, mostly with children, uh, uh, most likely struggling communities, uh, most likely refugees. Um, and uh, despite their daily, daily lives, their adjustment to the United States, uh, I feel like I can connect uh, with them and be a great role model to them in a very creative way, fun way. So um, I get to create uh, permanency uh, with them, uh, starting from not much, uh, a lump of clay and um, creating unicorns with mm -hmm. them. So, and for me, this is magic and uh, I love my work. I love um, the possibilities. So how does it uh, feel to be um, part of the expression when somebody just discovers that they can create something, they can make something on their own? Well, I always like uh, to see the, the reactions of children, especially children that haven't done any project with me yet, because they, you can just tell they get into my space and, and uh, they know it's going to be a, kind of a supervised, uh, scheduled time to do an art project. They might not get into it. They might uh, be int you know, interested so-and-so. Um, and um, so, but as soon as they see the possibilities, and I like to make it very easy and simple at first, uh, just to grab the clay and just smush it, roll it onto texture, and make it very accessible and create 
spirals out of uh, just basic material or everyday material. And very quickly, they realize there's so much possibilities. And once they realize also that I will bring those back in a week or two to them and it will be fired and it will be uh, permanent, it will be eternal for them, it will be uh, you know, growing with them, it's, uh, it has permanency to their project. Well, it's a piece of art in a, in a world that is very changing, I think, for some of these kids. I'm, I'm sure that's the case. Um, Genevieve, you brought us some art. Uh, can you tell us what you brought today? Yeah, these are all, uh, these are projects that I made in the last few weeks here, and they're just examples of um, uh, different events that I try to maybe reach the children. These are not necessarily the most... Uh, create your own identity through the project or they're just very just fun and enjoyable project. This one here, such as this one here, uh, these are little canteens, uh, little bottles in which um, the children get to put their own favorite drinks once oh, it's sweet. fired and it's, uh, you know, food safe. They love it. These are actually bottles that I throw on the wheel. So before I leave the art center, um, I go on the wheel for maybe an hour and I throw like 15 bottles like this. I carry them in a plastic box. They stay nice and soft and the children get to alter them. In this case, here we made an oval out of a cylindrical form and then added handles and uh, decorated them. In this, whoops, in this case, this one here is a love potion. Oh. It's for a love potion, oh. the girl. Uh, Michaela, Michaela um, made little hearts and wrote love on it. So That's she wants so to put sweet. a love potion in that. Well, tell us <laughs> about the eggs. Uh, the eggs, uh, well, first of all, the fish is basically just a piggy bank, oh, right? Oh, nice. So it's always fun to do. We add a little plug there. But the eggs is basically, um, I made quite a bit of those at some point uh, for a project that I was involved in. And I had a lot of them left over. So anyways, uh, I keep those with me. And when I have excellent participation, <laughs> I reward the children with eggs. So, oh, that's cute. Uh, so this is basically a dolly egg, right? It's a dolly egg. That's there right. It's melted over the, yeah, yeah. Over the pan So there. they get to have an egg. Oh. And I have yet to make bacon strips. <laughs> I've been asked to do bacon strips. To go also. with the eggs. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's outstanding. So. Um, this is so much fun. It's so much fun talking to you, and I'm really excited because um, we're going to take a little break, and when we come back, you're going to help us make an art project right yep. here on The Pulse. Yep. So don't go away. The odds of a child being in a fatal automobile accident, 1 in 23,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 150. To learn the signs of autism, go to autismspeaks.org. Welcome back. And now we're going to do an art project. So Genevieve, tell us what you've brought for us. Well, today we're going to do a clay project together. And uh, what I brought is something that is kind of my signature project with children. And it's, uh, it's a, um, a very personalized project in the, in the lines of uh, basically, we're going to use our shoe, and shoe. Oh, we're good. going to take an impression of our shoe. Great. I've got great shoes on tonight, so I think we're in good shape. I don't think these are going to work. You, you need like a lot of shoes. relief to make it fun. As you can see here, I have a mug here made with a shoe that's got a lot of bumps and creases here. Yeah. These shoes... I don't mm, have any bumps and creases. No. So let's look at mine. All right. What did you do? Oh, yes. oh, oh, that's yes. a good, good one. That's going to so make a good impression. So we're looking for bumps there, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to have you help me do that, or maybe I can guide you and you can do it, okay? All right, so this is the mug here, and mm -hmm. basically we're starting with a flat slab of fresh clay there. Okay. So I'm going to move this here for a second. There you go. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to put the my slipper, which convenient size right away. You're going to press on the shoe like that to get a good print of my shoe sole. And this is actually called, when I teach at the Minnetonka Center for the Arts, I actually call this class a sole impression. A sole so, impression, yeah. okay. 
So go ahead and press, get a good okay. print of that shoe. Mm. You really want to press hard and press and hold and press and hold. Yep, good pressure there. How am I doing, Genevieve? Pretty good. Excellent. Let's make sure we don't move the slipper just yet. Get the sides really good. She's an expert. There you go. And then let's see, should we see what we have? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot to put the magic release powder. Okay. okay. Ooh, that's pretty good. Normally, when I'm in class, we use my son's toenail dust. Toenail okay? dust. Which the kids are discussed for a few seconds here. When I say that, it's actually cornstarch. It's actually but it's, it's a release So that material. would have made a difference then. Yep. Too. So yep. we press. That would have made a nice little difference there as far That's as okay. releasing. All right. There you go. We're done with that part. Now we have a nice impression. We're going to go ahead and cut the straight line like this here. And I'm going to have you do the same thing right here. Okay. Maybe an inch above the shoe there. How about that? Beautiful, perfect. And now usually I have all kinds of tool, thank you. These okay. are specs. I have all kinds of tools here that can add design. If you see here on that mug here, I have lines here. This is made with a tool like that, which is basically a screen door tool. Okay, oh, a screen door, screen a door, door okay? But how about you give it a try okay. here and see what that so, does. So Genevieve, while I'm playing with these tools, I have a fork and a, 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 what do you call that thing? Yep, this is a loop tool. A loop tool. While I play with these, why don't you tell us, and then I see I have stamps. I'm just going to have some fun stamp here. stamp there. And yep. why don't you tell us some of the stories about some of the, your experiences in the classroom? Well, um, I get to bring clay, of course. So a lot of time, I need a lot of time to set up, and the kids are looking at me around, and I'm, I'm pulling out all these tools, all that clay. I mean, clay for 15 to 20 children, there's a lot of material to bring, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I have a, a, a quick anecdote for you. Um, not too long ago, I was getting ready to teach a class, and I had just made it with the bad weather. I had just made it just a couple minutes before the event started. So. I didn't have quite a good time to a good good amount of time to size the classroom and see which children were more into art than others and so anyway so I had this uh, big boy it was K through five uh, K through fifth grade and uh, I had this older child that was in fifth grade I believe and that didn't seem too interested and the whole activity I didn't quite reach him and. He oh, barely got, yeah, he barely got into the, the project, right? And toward the end, I thought, you know what? Maybe he's kind of a bully at school and the kids don't really interact with him. He doesn't feel like being with these kids. I didn't know, right? So basically at the end, he comes to me and says, Genevieve, guess what I wrote on my bowl? Because we made a bowl. Um, I said, I don't know, buddy, but you should be picking up right now. It's time to pick up, right? I get to the studio, uh -huh. unpack all those beautiful clay projects. Uh -huh. I, led on, I land on his bowl. He wrote, Joy makes the world happy. Oh, <laughs> Genevieve, It just how made sweet. my day. Oh, just you've made, made my day. day. Hey, yeah, this, how do, so. what do you think? How am I doing here? Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, so now I next the step there. Okay. is this here. Next step okay. is knife here. We're going to cut. Nice angled cut here, nice angled cut here. Scraps, scraps. There you go. I'm gonna help you for that part. I'm going to lift it up. Uh -huh. Look at the beautiful print, you guys. And we're going to close that shape here, uh -huh. like this. I'm gonna have a fork. Can I do that? Oh, scratch. you have to scratch that part. Scratch and attach. Okay. Scratch and attach. And Add then, a little dab of water, okay. little dab of water, See, I'm and attach. Now I go like this? Yep. Attach, you're going and to be all it takes? a surgeon and make a beautiful seam there. There you go. When you know, done I'm so excited. Part, I haven't done clay in a hundred years. Okay, not that long, but anyway, that a long time. time. And it really is fun to get your hands in that mud, isn't it? Yeah, I know. There's something so uh, primal about it. It really is. I'm excited. Okay, okay now what? There you go. We need a bottom for your mug, right? Okay. I'm going to put it on top there. Cut around it. There you go. How about you finish the rest? Okay. 
do I want it to hang out like that or do I want it real close mm, to Just a little bit. Very close, but a little bit extra is good. Oopsie. Okay. Perfect. There Scratch and attach. Scratch. Water. With a fork. A fork works just great, right? Mm -hmm. Scratch, scratch, scratch. A little water. Uh -huh. Reposition there and attach nicely. Now when we're done with that, I'm going to smooth this out to make sure it's nice and smooth for your lip. Uh -huh. Now I have this piece here that's kind of like a big hot dog here. Uh -huh. We could make a nice handle using a ribbon style like that or here's what I like to do with children here is we use this here on a diagonal on a diamond shape here. I'm going to do one part, you can do the other part. I'm going to roll this down like this here. There you go. You can try that. Okay. So I'm going to go this way then. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's really pretty. Oh, very oh, nice. Yes. It's like a beaver tail. Yeah. Almost. Well, the design, not yep. the shape. Yep. Okay, there we and go. And then we're just basically going to attach this, snip a little piece of it. That's going to be our handle like this here and that's all it takes that's all it takes and we're going to scratch and attach scratch and right attach. scratch and attach same way we can also use little stamps such as this one here so scratch here yep scratch and attach with a little bit of water all righty little bottle of clay here you know what genevieve we're just out of time so we're going to end here and we really want to thank you and Roxanne for thank coming you. by tonight. It's just been delightful meeting you two. Thank you. And thank we you really, for really, me. we really appreciate all the good work you're doing in the state. Thank you. I love it. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having me. Beverly, you've been a, an excellent participant. So I have this reward for you. It's a fun little ceramic egg for you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I did an excellent job. <laughs> thank you, Genevieve. And thank you for joining us on The Pulse, the show that tunes you into the heartbeat of the Lake Minnetonka community. We hope that wherever you go and whatever you do this month, have a beautiful April.